shocks. Mental move, no shock, thank you, Pops aren't clear. Hi, I'm El Progers. Welcome to Just Off The Highway. And today, I've got an upgrade because I'm just off the runway. There'll probably be plenty of background noise in this episode because we're at the South African Air Force Museum, SWAT Corps Air Force Base in Centurion, and it's a flying day. Now, I would normally apologize for the imperfect sound quality, but instead, turn up the volume because these engines were meant to raise your pulse rate. They sound awesome. Aviation enthusiasts meet here on the first Saturday of almost every month and actually fly historic aircraft. And we groundlings, the, the members of the public, can get up close to watch and hear and even touch a wide variety of planes from different eras. And we can discuss their history with experts. It's geek paradise. So for older folks, it might be a bit nostalgic, but for young people, it's also a powerful introduction to the magic of flying. Because these days on commercial flights, security measures stop you from even seeing the plane properly. And once you're on board, it's less like flying and more like being crammed into the worst cheap seat in a bad restaurant. But these are just awesome. And today I've got the rare opportunity to visit something even more special that the public doesn't normally get to see. It doesn't even fly at the moment. But before we go there, please swoop down on that like button and leave a comment and share the video. You can also help me to deal with the soaring cost of making these episodes by leaving me a coffee or two on buymeacoffee.com slash lprogers and qualify for regular bonus content. Now imagine an aircraft that flies the length of Africa and then rules these skies and as a reward gets stuck on a pole for more than 30 years. Imagine it's rescued, overall, transformed, and it flies again magnificently until it's crashed, suffering severe damage that would be the end of most planes. And like in great mythology, because make no mistake, this is a mythical aeroplane. Imagine that it's not done yet, because this plane that won't quit meets a team of people who won't give up. I'd like to introduce you to the ongoing story of the iconic fighter aircraft, Spitfire 5518. This is what remains of Spitfire number 5518, the last remaining South African Air Force Spitfire in existence. She was built in 1945, flown to South Africa in 1947. And this aircraft flew until 1954 when she was withdrawn from service and became a gate guard at Vardekloof Air Force Base, which essentially means they stuck it up on a pole for people going in and out of the base to look at. And there she stayed for 30 years. In the 1990s, she was restored to serviceable condition and flew proudly at air shows and events. Until in the year 2000, while landing here at Swartkops, the aircraft crashed into a wall and was badly damaged. Fortunately, the pilot wasn't killed. And the wreckage is carefully gathered and preserved. And after another 15 years, restoration was authorized and work began to get this injured bird back into the skies. Now I'd like to introduce one of the major driving forces behind this project. Colonel Tony Smith retired, the former OC of the South African Air Force Museum. Colonel, thank you very much for giving us your time. Pleasure, any time. How did your paths cross with Spitfire 5518? During the years 1946 to 1952, my father flew Venturas and Dax and things at Swartkop. And my brother and I used to go to school in VTA up here in Fuerteventura. And after school came and sat at Swatkops and we watched Spitfires and things flying around here. We managed to, they were all doing training 
a lot of training and flying, and that's where we first got to have a look at them and admire them. Can you describe for me just that, that sensation of flying? What it's like to fly um, a military aircraft or a fighter aircraft uh, for those of us who are groundlings who have to stand on the ground and watch? Well, um, on the fighter side of aircraft, I have flown vampires. I've flown provosts, which were light ground attack aircraft. I've flown uh, the Harvards. I've flown a P-51 Mustang. I did the test flying on the one we have here at the museum. And um, to me, it's a fantastic experience. You know, it's, it's different because I did a lot of transport flying in my life, thousands of hours of transport. So um, it's quite different and it's very much fun to get back into one of the little ones where you could play with it. And, it, and they react. Can you tell me, why do you think that Spitfires seem to uniquely capture the public's imagination? Well, I think if you um, remember the Battle of Britain, all the hype from the Battle of Britain days, where they gave the Spitfire sort of uh, accolades, the Spitty, in fact, ended up as the aeroplane, although the Hurricanes did quite a lot of work, if not more. But the Spitfire just uh, took everybody's imagination, and it is an extremely good aeroplane. And uh, fighting against the ME-109s and probable 190s, she did her job well. And what would you say makes this particular aircraft so unique? This aircraft had been on a plinth. They'd saved it out of the whole bunch that were being chopped up. It was eventually painted just plain silver and put on a, a pole at Waterkloof, where it stayed for approximately 30 years. The rest were all chopped up. All the Spitfires are in a row down there in Snake Valley, just below where we're sitting now. And um, they were just cut up. Guys were given axes and things. And this one happened to be taken out of the system and brought up for, for uh, preservation. We decided to take this Spitfire off the pole at Waterloo and we did a complete restoration over a period of about seven years. Now, this particular aircraft, of course, crashed. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? What went wrong there? Lieutenant Colonel Thomas was flying it on a training sortie because we, we used to do, do the various training sorties. And he was flying it here in the circuit and it appears that he had a partial engine failure just towards the end of downwind on the runway. And uh, he turned tight to try and make the runway, but unfortunately, he could have made it, he would have possibly made it, but we had that big concrete wall. And he just didn't make it and actually flew it into the wall. And luckily he was clever enough to sort of stall it just before that, pull it back and hit it flat instead of head on, um, which sort of it flattened the wings a little bit and as you can see, damaged the tail. That sna tail snapped off and the engine got a bit crunched up in the front or the engine mountings. Um, and basically that was it and he was very, very lucky to get out. So. Can you tell us a little bit about where we are in the restoration process at the moment? At the moment we are looking at fundraising for a start. It's, it's a huge job. We need funds for, for the job. We're not getting funds from the defence at the moment. As uh, I think everybody knows our defence force is working hard to, to try and keep going with funds. So it looks that might have to be a public sponsored aeroplane. In other words, it, companies, if a particular company or two or three um, 
companies would like to sponsor the aeroplane. They could get a lot of advertising from it. And we need money now to start get going. Then this hangar here must be finished so that we can mount the jigs, fix them to the floors, get everything leveled off. And as soon as that's been done, the fuselage gets mounted onto the jigs and the game's on. I know that you have a, a small team, a dedicated team of enthusiasts, and I really just have to ask, surely it would be easier to just give up? No chance. <laughs> Forget it. Well, in, in my, in my uh, thing, there's no such a thing as give up. And our guys, South Africans don't give up, has been seen throughout two world wars and Korea. We don't give up. You're going to think I'm crazy, but I'll say it anyway. In this half a hangar, there's a palpable atmosphere of urgency. It comes from the people who are devoted to getting Spitfire 5518 airworthy again. You feel it when you talk to people like Tony Smith and Ian Grace, who devote extraordinary amounts of time to this restoration product. It's focus. But there's another underlying energy, like an engine note that's somehow just out of range of your ear. You can't hear it, but you can feel it. If you put your hand on the outer skin of this aircraft, it's it's eagerness, it's impatience. It's like it's daring you to keep on going, to dream big, to take flight. It's like a faint echo of a time when the Spitfire embodied the spirit of, we shall never surrender. So visit the South African Air Force Museum at Swartkopf in Centurion. Buy some of the Spitfire Restoration Project merchandise. Every contribution helps them to get closer to takeoff. So I'll see you soon, just off the highway. Or maybe just above the highway. Because it's around about this time that the little boy part of my brain starts wondering what would happen if I put this Merlin Spitfire engine into a certain sky blue Toyota.